In November 1859, On the Origin of Species by Charles Darwin was published, a mighty work condensed into a short phrase by Herbert Spencer, Survival of the Fittest. On the front cover, Darwin added, by means of natural selection. But it wasn't long before scientists were experimenting with less natural means. They wanted to accelerate the evolutionary process. Eugenics was the science of improving the genetic composition of a population. There was a negative side, the elimination of defectives that corrupted the gene pool. The most distorted manifestation of this science was Nazi Germany. Through eugenics, Adolf Hitler thought he could breed the Aryan race. Through eugenics, those deemed undesirable by the Nazis, the Roma, the promiscuous, communists, homosexuals, the entire Jewish race could be exterminated. Genetic cleansing became genocide. In this room will be discussed and perhaps resolved the vital issues on which the East and West are divided. After the Second World War, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted by the United Nations, affirmed men and women of full age without any limitation due to race, nationality or religion have the right to marry and to found a family. And that should have been that, the end of the dangerous idea. But two things happened. The first, in fact, had already happened. Back in 1936, at the Berlin Olympic Games, Hitler's supposed showpiece for his Aryan athletes. Making a mockery of Nazi ideology with his achievements was Jesse Owens, winner of four gold medals. Ironically, this destroyer of the Aryan myth was an oppressed citizen in his own land, born in Oakville, Alabama, in what was called the Segregated South. The lot of the black man in America would barely improve over the next 32 years. Tommy Smith and John Carlos chose the Olympic rostrum in Mexico City in 1968 to demonstrate just that. Traction was to symbolize that we are athletes in track and field. We are black and we are the best. Black power. That's the second thing. For the past 80 years, ever since Eddie Tolan became the first African-American runner to win the 100 meters at the 1932 Los Angeles Games, sprint events have been dominated by black athletes. From Tolan and Owens in the 30s to Usain Bolt and Johan Blake right now. There have been white winners, but only one white sprinter has ever run under 10 seconds for the 100 meters, Christophe Lemaitre and the Frenchman is still a long way behind the Jamaicans. And these black sprinters, even those who have worn the vest of Canada or Britain, just about all of them can trace their ancestry back to West Africa, that is, to slaves. And here we come back to eugenics, the theory of accelerated selection. Who was it that survived being put in shackles, packed into slave ships and taken across the ocean. Who was it that survived the life of forced labor on the cotton and sugar plantations? The fittest. Only the fittest could survive. The latest suggestion in the science of sprinting is that you need the non-mutant version of the alpha actin in skeletal muscle isoform 3 gene. Who could argue with that? Except Given what has sometimes come out of the laboratory for sprinters, we should perhaps remain a little skeptical. The point is, the scientists are back in the gene pool, fishing. Is it dangerous? Do we know where it will lead? Gene doping is the next great fear among people who are trying to keep sport clean. For now, we are nowhere near saying that child X will win one day because he or she has inherited the right cocktail of genes. For the moment, we are as unpredictable and full of mystery as ever. As Darwin said, from so simple a beginning, endless forms, most beautiful and most wonderful, have been and are being evolved.